I take it everybody knows these guys. They, they don't introduce my name, but I, just quickly introduce you one why you're here. Because we're talking about comedy, crossover between I'm comedy and sci-fi. Sure, so, to be honest, but and you're, yeah, and you're going to be involved soon. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Allen, and I'm in uh, I'm in the forthcoming series of Threesome, which Tom McRae writes. So, you know, they sent a taxi, so I turned up. Hi, I'm Lucy Brown. I've been in Primeval, and I've just gone into um, comedy writing, which is what we've all been talking about on the panel. Um, I'm Tom McRae, and I'm one of the writers on Doctor Who, and I created Threesome, the sitcom on Comedy Central. Uh, I'm Russell Tovey, hello. <laughs> Cheers. And uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and another one. I'm an actor. Thank you. So, what is the crossover between science fiction and comedy? Absolutely it... nothing. <laughs> well, we talked long and hard on the subject, and we decided that it was bungle. <laughs> from Rainbow was. Did anyone see our talk? No, one, one person, two one, people. One guy there. So, yeah. So, the crossover between science fiction and comedy is Bungle from Rainbow. Would you like to expand upon it's, this if theory? If you weren't in the talk, the in-joke makes no sense. The crossover <laughs> is, is uh, about setup and punchline, I think. And in high concept stuff, it's set up and sort of twist reveal, and in joke, it's set up and gag. But it's all the setup and the twist and the reveal. That's what I think. We didn't really talk about it, to be honest. We just talked about <laughs> famous people we'd met. And Tom's was Bungle from Rainbow. Yeah, I met Bungle from Rainbow. Uh, a friend of mine used to know him. Good story, right? W was he in the outfit? No. Uh, uh, Did he, he have in, the outfit? He was in Pizza Express, actually. And my friend had to go there to pay him the rent. It's not a great story. It's getting, it's getting better. It's getting bigger the more the day goes on. I don't actually know why I'm here. Lucy, what have you got to say? We also talked about the idea of Dungeons and Dragons, the movie. Yeah. Because we thought that might be quite a good thing now with the way all CGI and everything. What do you think of that? Who watched Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, we, we were talking about what we watched as kids. And that seemed to be one of them. We thought, now might be a good time to do that. So that was also what we were talking about. It's a real shame you missed it. It was a fantastic yeah, panel. <laughs> Uh, never to be repeated. The, we, 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 the insightfulness of it was, was overwhelming, I think. Absolutely. The, yeah. the, uh, no stone left unturned. Does um, anyone have any questions? There's a little lad here has got a question. Where are you? Put your hand up. Oh, I'll be roving Mike. Oh, he's got... Where did he get a mic from as well? Oh, he's Nick George. What happens in the new series of Being Human? I've, I, I, I've no idea. Lots, lots of sci-fi things. Well, thank you for your sympathies. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers, mate. Are you, are you still going to watch it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Boo. Who said boo? Him. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'll watch it. I love it. Hang on, then. We've got another one here. Anyone else? I can write here. <laughs> Uh, the question was, out of all the series of Being Human, which one's your favourite, favorite. Russell? Um, I like the third series. It's so many. Oh, good. Uh, I think the third series went... Uh, the first series is very light, the second series went very dark, the third series was a combination of the two. And I like the fact that George and Mitchell's characters in the third series kind of were living separate lives and not aware of what was going on. And then when it all came together at the end, it was even more dramatic and painful and uh, yeah very proud of series three thanks for asking that question what was it like to do the transformation where are you oh what was it like to do the transformations from like a human to a werewolf to kind of put those together um long days uh fun at times um uncomfortable at times uh, but the finished product was always really good, so, you know, I was, we, when we did the panel earlier, someone asked me that question, I get asked that question loads about the makeup, because it's such a, a big part of when they do transformations in sci-fi films and werewolves and that. And um, I signed up to play a werewolf, so I had, to, I had to kind of put myself through it. And it's kind of a bit annoying, because when you see, like, Lenora plays Annie, she just wears the same clothes every day, that's her transformation. And, Aiden playing Mitchell, he just puts a couple of teeth in. They CGI his eyes, and he has, maybe has a bit of blood that tastes like mouthwash. That's as much as it goes for him. So I kind of got the raw deal. 
So I should earn more money. Yes. Hang on. Do I miss Brixton? Bristol. Uh, yeah, I love Bristol. Bristol. Anyone for Brist Brizzo? For Shizzo? Brizzo for Shizzo. Yes, Bristol's an incredible city. Really cultural and funky, quite hippie. Lots of students, lots of pissheads. So it's sorry, kids in the audience. Lots of people who drink a lot all the time. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. Um, because we're here, I was going to ask uh, to all of you, what is your favourite, like, either comics or movie-based comics, or do you have something you like to read, or anything? All of you. What's your favourite comics or movies? I, I thought The Dark Knight... What was the, the last Batman? The Dark Knight Returns, Rises? The Dark Knight. I just thought it was just one of the most amazing films I've ever seen ever. I thought the Joker was uh, absolutely amazing. It was funny. He was hilarious. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> learn from Heath Ledger. Not in, not the whole way, but uh, he, he, I was just a, such a brilliantly written film and the idea was so clever and sort of transcended just superpowers. It was just brilliant. But the yes. Avengers was cool. I saw that the other week. That was really good. Tom? Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That was oh, great, wasn't it? Wasn't that, that a great film? Yeah. Why isn't that repeated more? It is repeated more. Okay, why don't I watch the television more? Um, yeah, that's my answer. Tunes. Is that a good I don't know much about comics. It's not comics. really the kind of comic book superhero. What is this? What are we at? <laughs> Where am I? Sorry, what? Incredibles, that's a great film. Incredibles what? It's a cartoon and it's superheroes. Well, yeah, but we weren't asking you. <laughs> But I didn't really have... We were trying to fill dead air, and I was dying. Tom, say Mighty Mouse and move on. Mighty Mouse. Mighty White. Which is the bread. That's a bread, obviously, that we all remember from the 80s. Um, kind books I love. I love Spider-Man. I'm really looking forward to seeing the new one, I have to say. I'm also really looking forward to Prometheus. I'm not sure if that falls into the same sort of comic book thing, but that's the film that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Well, I am um, the, the lead in my sitcom, Emon Elliot, is in uh, Prometheus. Oh, is he? And sadly can't be here today. He nearly was. Um, but he's, he's going to be out of town today. But, uh, but watch series two of Threesome and Prometheus if you want to. <laughs> Pretty much the same, aren't they? He's, he's great. I mean, he plays a slight, slightly, very slightly camp, fabulous gay guy in Threesome and this kind of butch, whatever the hell thing in uh, Prometheus. So he's got range. Hi, Lucy, hello. Hi. Um, you said you're just starting to move into comedy writing. What sort of stuff are you working on? Um, writing, actually. Um, just working with um, an actress called Olivia Poulet, who's in the thick of it. And also in series two of threesome. And also, oh, yes, she, yeah. And <laughs> we're all connected. So yes, I've started doing a lot of comedy writing and developing a new series and a new screenplay, actually. So yeah, very exciting. A different, uh, different direction after Primeval. <laughs> well, that too was hilarious. <laughs> I was just wondering about the Doctor Who. How was it writing for something that has so much backstory and so many like loyal followers, and then actually trying to put your own stamp on it as well? There's a question about writing Doctor Who with the heritage of the show. Um, well, I, I love it, so I I find that very exciting. I, I loved it when I was a kid, and I love the thought that kids today will be as excited by what I've done as I was by what the writers were doing in the 80s, um, and maybe even a little bit more because we do have. You know, a bit more money, a bit better special effects, um, and the best actors you can get. Uh, and I, I think the sort of there is a bit of pressure on it because it regenerates with each actor and with each lead writer, and even by episode by episode. So the girl who waited is so standalone; it kind of could have gone anywhere. In any any doctor could have done that story, and but uh, other ones obviously kind of pick up on that, and pick up on what's gone beyond more. And all I say about the, the upcoming 50th is that obviously, you know, there's a big Dalek story opening in the new series, which is absolutely brilliant. And is any expectations you've got, double them. It's that good. It's not, I know some people thought, oh, is it just like, they'll just be in it a bit. It's so, 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 so brilliant. And then the 50th, which obviously is going to be a big heart back to everything that's gone before. So there's going to be lots of nostalgia for Doctor Who fans over the next year or, or two years. And since the subject of Doctor Who's come up, I'm going to ask you a very leading question. Who do you think should be the next showrunner when Stephen Moffat steps down? Well, it's not for me to uh, 
No, I, got, I just got nominated for you Hugo. Were, you weren't quite so modest in the panel no, before. So I, by the way, <laughs> the, no, I, being nominated for Hugo means nothing. Do you know what that is? Before I told you? Is it something to do with Martin Scorsese? No, exactly. See, no one knows. And I thought one place to come is here and go, I've been nominated for Hugo. That's good, yeah? Uh, yeah, no, no, no one cares. But here, I thought that actually is going to mean something. So, yeah, it should be me, obviously. But I'm up against Stephen and, um, and Neil Gaiman, who's now my friend on Facebook. He's got like a million friends on Facebook. Um, Matt and, Damon. Uh, Neil Gaiman. It rhymes, but different, different careers. Uh, and, and so let's see who wins the Hugo. If I beat Moffat and Gaiman, then uh, <laughs> that'd be good, wouldn't it? But Steve should win, because he's a genius. Any more? Hi, yeah, uh, with writing the Doctor Who, are there certain rules about what you can and can't not write about, or can you just go your own way with it? Well, I think you've got to be conscious that it is, at its heart, a children's show. So there's rules about, I mean, obviously swearing. Um, we don't show blood, so you can have green alien blood or humans kind of zapped and falling down but they can't bleed. We don't tend to have human on human violence, um, which is kind of an unwritten rule. Uh, but I suppose really the point is that it's so flexible as a format, but at the same time it's still I had blood time. when I got shot. You did, didn't you? I had blood everywhere. Yeah, David was leaving. Oh no, well, that wasn't your. Well, Kylie was there. Kylie was there, so that if offset. If Kylie's in an episode, you're like, but you didn't really. The glitter see... and then blood. You did, you yeah, the glitter. That's <laughs> like that's your autobiography. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Glitter blood and, and blood. glitter. But you you didn't have that much, did you? Did you? Yeah, see I got it? shot and I was holding shot by it. Jeffrey and I didn't, it was like, yeah. With a gun. Actually, that's another thing. People don't take get shot with guns. It's always like laser guns. I got shot with a gun. You did. You got shot with a gun and you bled by and a human. And I bled. There we go. Russell. And that was human on human violence. Redefines the genre. The man can't and then help I swore. It. That was it. Yeah. Then he said, "No, uh, well, yeah. but yeah, and you got to, you know, marry John Barrowman in it or whatever happened at the end." So yeah. But it took no, it so it's not it's not rules exactly, but there's an expectation. But you can change it. Like the girl who waited didn't have any guest characters, and I don't think anyone's ever done that before. So that was something that was new, but it still feels like Doctor Who. Yeah. And it was wonderful. You watched it, didn't you? Yeah, loved it. He had a screening at his flat, and we all went round there and. Arthur Darville was there, and Karen, Karen Gillan, Gillan, and... She broke the chair. She broke the chair, broke yeah. The chair. And we had a Dalek, and an, an Ood. We went... You didn't come to the karaoke after, did you? I missed karaoke We went after, to his London karaoke. It was a really good night. <laughs> she broke the chair. She sat on the chair. She picked it up and smashed it against yeah. the wall. <laughs> it was rock she and said, roll. I thought the writing in this is terrible. But <laughs> she left her umbrella at my house, and that's the one I'm now using. So there's a... So you I'm stole Karen Gillan's no, umbrella? No, she left it at my house, so I got Karen Gillan's umbrella. I walk around every day feeling like a little touch of stardust is rubbed <laughs> off on me when it rains, because I've got Karen Gillan's umbrella. Amazing. Did you watch any other episodes that year? Did I watch what? Any other episodes <laughs> that year? So what? Yes, everything. I remember you once said to me, and I'll quote you exactly, this was years ago, you went, Doctor Who, what's it about? Is this before I was in it? Uh, it was about what, the time that you were in it. it. Um, I think that's an excellent question. Yeah. I was on the phone, I was on the bus going to Shepherd's Bush. I remember saying to you, I can't really sum, up, sum, sum it, up. it all up on the bus. I now know. Yeah, it's a good show. It's a great show. I've right, got a question over here, guys. Hi, Russell. Hi. Interested that you introduced yourself as an actor, but you've got a lot of comic ability as well. I'd like to know what you, is the difference, what you see is the difference between the two. Uh, well, if I was a comedian, I'd be doing stand-up and all that, and that's, that's not my thing. I think Tom I'm Allen an actor does. and I, I can do funny stuff. Some people laugh, some people don't. But uh, I see myself predominantly as a, a dramatic actor. Uh, yes. I like your hair. Any more? Put your hand up. How many small can't see? Here we go. <sighs> uh, hi, Russell. Uh, Hiya. What, what was it like working on Sherlock? It was good. It was, <laughs> thanks. Uh, it was, um, I did, I went and did a screen test for that. I, I do a show called Him and Her, and they had the screen test. Thanks, guys. And they had the screen test next door at Twickenham Studios. And um, they had a lighting change, and I run, run next door, 10 minutes free, and I went in and put it on tape, and then went back in to set. And I got it, so then I shot it straight afterwards. It's right cushy, massive fluke. Shot it straight afterwards, then did being human, and then sort of forgot about it, because it just, everything just kind of happened work-wise. And then it started to come out, and there was loads of promotion for it, and I went to a party the night before it went out, 
Uh, so many people were coming up to me going, biggest show on TV, how you feeling? I was like, pretty nervous now you said that. I, wasn't, well, I didn't really think about it. And it come out, and it's the most nervous I've ever been when something's come out on TV, because everything I do is quite culty and digital, and you know, it's got like a fan base and it's found its audience. But that's like prime time, proper. You know, I had the sort of same thing when I did Doctor Who with Kylie Minogue. Yeah. Um, we've, we've heard of that. You've heard of that, yeah. But that's, that wasn't as big a part, but whereas Sherlock, it just felt like, <laughs> but um, it was, yeah, it was good to do. And Benedict's awesome and Martin's awesome. And it was a Mark Gatiss script and he's also awesome. So it's good. Thanks for asking. It is a brilliant show. Thanks. It's so <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I can yeah, take all credit. all credit. Do you know, you'll know uh, Moffat's been uh, given the Dennis Potter BAFTA. Dennis, which is, he's he, so he's been given Dennis Potter's BAFTA. Yeah. Dennis, they dug him up, <laughs> clawed <laughs> really? it out of his cold, dead hands. <laughs> yeah, really. uh, Has he still got hands? Has he what? Still got hands? Dennis Potter, yeah, he had them insured. Oh, did he? Yeah, they're, they're um, cryogenically. <laughs> <laughs> he had them. He had them. You know, we get like backpack salmon in the supermarket. Oh, <laughs> ah, yeah. They did, they heat sealed them in. For future, for posterity. With the BAFTA. For posterity, right, yeah. BAFTA. But now, not anymore. But now, now Stephen, now the curse moves on to Stephen. <laughs> uh, but no, he's, he's, my friend, he's wonderful.